Testament reading is Amos chapter 5, various verses. Seek the Lord and live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph, and it devour, with none to quench it for Bethel. O you who turn justice to wormwood and cast down righteousness to the earth, they hate him who reproves in the gate, and they abhor him who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and you exact taxes of grain from him, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins, you who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and turn aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, he who is prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate, that it may be the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The epistle reading is Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leaving you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end, as it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. For those, for who were those who heard and yet rebelled? Was it not all those who left Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he provoked for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? So we see that they were unable to enter because of their unbelief. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As Jesus was setting up out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he said to Jesus, teacher, all these I've kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, you lack one thing, go sell all that you have and give to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven and come, follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's pray. Lord, may the meditation to my mouth and the words and the excuse me, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer, in Jesus' name. Amen. Encourage one another as long as it is called today so that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. And I, uh, I don't believe there's really a person here who thinks that they could be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. I, I, I believe that. But that's what happened. In, in, to either was in danger of happening or happened to all the people in the readings that we heard uh, today, this morning. The psalm, for instance, recounts the tragic history of Israel. The people passed through a sea that God opened for them. They drank from a, a rock from which God brought water at Moses, at Moses when he struck the rock. Uh, he rained down bread from heaven for the people to eat. And then the people heard God with his own voice. At Sinai say, I am your God. I delivered you. I did all this for you. And you'll be my people, not just my people. Out of all the people of the earth, you're going to be my treasured possession. You're going to be for me a kingdom of priests. And they heard that with their own ears. They heard God say that to them. You're going to you are my treasured possession. So they saw this happening, and yet somehow. 
They believed. They, 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 they neither feared nor loved the Lord enough that whenever something went wrong and they got hungry or thirsty, they would, they would accuse God of bringing them out into the wilderness just so that He might kill them. The deceitfulness of sin. God doesn't have our best interest at heart. And then we come, come 700 years later to the time when Amos is called to prophesy to a people who thought they were in good standing with God. Seek the Lord and live. God is, Amos is calling them to seek the Lord and live because the deceitfulness of sin had blinded them. Rather than doing justice, they admired judges who accepted bribes. Rather than, rather than loving mercy, the people figured out how they could bilk the poor as they sat and worshipped. That's what they were pondering. How can I cheat these people? How can I bilk these stupid people out of more money? Rather than walking humbly with their God, the people arrogantly pursued paths leading away from God. And this, literally, all the while, they were sitting in worship, bringing their offerings, singing psalms of praise to God, and God hated it. He hated it. Seek good, not evil. But how did the deceitfulness of sin so, and it be, had it become so systemic in their lives and in their culture that they didn't even recognize it? They just went about their business thinking everything was just good to go. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. So then we jump ahead to the New Testament when all of God's promises come to fruition in Jesus Christ. All the promises that Israel had been waiting on in the Messiah have come to fruition in Jesus Christ. As many as are the promises of God, they are all yes in Jesus Christ. And now the Apostle Paul, in writing to the church at Corinth who had, that had a ton of problems, but they were still somehow hanging on to Jesus, but now he's warning them, don't let the deceitfulness of sin lead you away from Christ. And then he recounts Israel's history, the one that, that we heard, and, say, and he says, these things were written so we don't make the same stupid mistakes. Because you're making them, Corinth. But did they see it? Did they turn to the Lord their God? We have a hard time believing that we could be deceived by the deceitfulness of sin. So then we go from Corinth to 20 years later when whoever it might have been, it could have been Paul, some think Apollos who wrote that letter to the Hebrews. It doesn't really matter, but the, the similarities between what Paul wrote to Corinth and now what is written to the people, the, the, the Hebrews who are dispersed, who've been scattered because of persecution, uh, the similarities are amazing just 20 years later, but it's the same thing. Encourage one another. What it, what it is still called today, encourage one another so that you aren't led away from Christ by the deceitfulness of sin. And here, what is the sin? The sin in this particular case is denying Christ, is denying His salvation. His forgiveness is the only way. They had been living the Torah life as good Jews, believing that this is how they had good standing with God, maintained that good standing with God, living this Torah life. But then they heard the good news. It's not what you do. It's what God has done for you and your Messiah, Jesus the Christ, you're saved by grace through faith on account of what he's done. And they received that news with joy and they followed Christ until they started getting persecuted. Most likely by fellow Jews. And so they were thinking, you know what? The old way seemed to work just fine and it still seems to be working for those other Jews who are persecuting us for following Christ. So, why don't we just go back? And the whole letter is saying you, you can't go back. It's a new reality. You can't go back. Don't be deceived. Don't turn your backs on Jesus. Don't be deceived. The whole letter presents him with the reality that there's no going back because Jesus has always and will always be the only way forward. Everything that was written prior to this all of Scripture, all of God-breathed Scripture 
points us to Jesus Christ so that we might be thoroughly equipped to lead godly lives, so that we might be trained in the way of righteousness, clothed with the very righteousness of Jesus Christ. If we confess our sin, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and clothe us with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And so how does the deceitfulness of sin creep into the lives of religious people? People who are apparently, from all outward appearances, living godly lives. And, and a case in point is this case of the rich young ruler. If there was anyone, if there was anyone who walked the earth in Jesus' day, who people would say, there is an example of a godly man, it would have been this rich young ruler. And he thought so himself. So he came to Jesus looking for a pat on the back, looking for an affirmation. What must I do to inherit eternal life? And well, there's the first clue that something's not right. Because inheritance is not about doing, it's about being. How can I be in a right relationship with God, Jesus? Could you tell me instead is what must you do? Because I've been doing pretty well. And Jesus said, well, you know the answer to that. You know what to do. Commandments are pretty straightforward. It is interesting to note that Jesus only cites commandments that have to do with how you relate to your neighbor. Doesn't you doesn't talk about anything about tr love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, etc. He just talks about because that really is, in a way, our love for God. The rubber meets the road in how we love one another. So Jesus says, you know the commandments, and then he doesn't list them in any particular order. He just kind of throws them out there. And indeed, the rich young ruler is, well, thank you, because I've kept all those as far back as I can remember. I'm good to go, Jesus. But Jesus saw that he lacked one thing. The, the deceitfulness, he loved, he loved his possessions, and he was very wealthy. And he loved his possessions more than God. The deceitfulness of sin here. What was the sin? The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And in this case, in this man's life, the evil was he couldn't trust God more than he trusted his money. He couldn't he couldn't let it all aside to follow Jesus and trust that Jesus has eternal life. Seek first the kingdom of God and all this will be added to you. He just couldn't get there. So he walked away. Sad. Because that wasn't the answer I was looking for, Jesus. And do you, do you think the siren voices of sin's deceitfulness have grown any less? I mean, all, who, all we get is misinformation or disinformation. Well, I'm going to check Snopes on that. Oh, you can't believe Snopes. You can't believe anything. How many of us really, really believe that it is if we had low inflation? If we had low inflation in a healthy stock market, everything would just be okay. How many of us believe that? All these siren voices harden the heart. They harden the heart. And love grows cold. And faith starts to look for another place to find repose than rather than in the arms of our precious Savior Jesus. That's what Hebrews was talking about. It is because of their disobedience that they didn't enter their rest that God had for them in the promised land. And, and he's saying, so there still must be a, a rest, if you will. Are, are you tired? Are you weary? Are you, you heavy burden? What did Jesus say to those people? Come to me. Come to me. As Milton approached last week, one of our neighbors posted a prayer of thanksgiving and protection. It was addressed to God, 
slash Mother Earth slash Mr. Universe slash Mother Nature slash Divine Light slash Spirit slash Destiny. I guess that got them all covered, except Bonnie posted that she missed the name that had been given, the name that is above every name, the name, the only name that's given in heaven and on earth by which people might be saved. Well, people did not like that. She got one like, I guess. Otherwise, she got, uh, you are so rude. How rude. I guess rejoice when you're persecuted for righteousness sake. I guess. I, don't, I didn't see the post exactly, but I would have to say you could have just thrown Jesus in there for good measure. Since apparently you believe one path is as good as another, except you don't like that path because of that claim. He's the, he's the only way. We need each other. Encourage one another while it is called today, while it is still today, so that you won't be led away from God by the deceitfulness of sin. We need to speak the truth in love. We need to be prepared to give an answer for the hope that is in us. Not a, I sure hope it turns out okay, but the sure and certain hope that one day we will see Jesus face to face. The sure and certain hope that we've already received the, the deposit guaranteeing that we will reign with Christ on the new earth and that deposit is the very Holy Spirit of God. When we talk about truth, I'm not talking about drilling down to some political truth. I'm talking about Jesus. The only way, the truth and nothing but the truth, and the life and that abundantly. Jesus. Beloved in Christ, unlike the rich young ruler, whatever life you're clinging to as the good life, if it's not Jesus and life eternal, within you, the Holy Spirit life, led by the Holy Spirit of God, let go. And let the Holy Spirit of God lead you into the way, the truth, and the life that is given us. And to do that, we need each other. We need each other. Encourage one another, brothers and sisters, while it is still today. Well, there is still time to work because night is coming, Jesus says, when no one can work. Was that just his time on the cross? Are you prepared for another week just to go back and face whatever it is you're going to have to face? Maybe there is a stronghold of sin in your life. Jesus, break it. Find it so that Satan doesn't get his foot in the door. Encourage one another with words like that. And as Paul warns, so that, so that you don't harden your heart against God's voice, the very voice of God, the very word of God proclaimed among us this morning. So as we move toward the entree of, to, entree of today's worship service, which is the Lord's Supper, we're going to have... Uh, we're going to have a salad served up first. And that salad is from the same letter to the Hebrews. And what's the main ingredient in a salad? Thank you. They must eat a lot of apple salads or something. But lettuce is what I was looking for. So listen for the lettuce. Let us. Draw near with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. What could that refer to? Bodies washed with pure water. No. Someone else. What would that refer to? With water. With, and bodies washed with pure water. Baptism. Thank you. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. 
And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good works. We should do that. Not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, the deceitfulness of sin, yes, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Let us encourage one another so God receives glory in the church, in Christ Jesus, and in future generations forever and ever. Amen. Church, we rejoice with those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this coming week. Um, and those folks include um, Celeste DeFazio has a birthday, Kathleen Bohemer, Carolyn Judd, Christopher Tomaszewski, Lucas Williams, Rhett Krause, Flo Vidixis, celebrating a wedding anniversary are Neil and Ruth Ann Sharp. I thought I'd be praying uh, for Skip as he goes into surgery this week, but they put that off to the 22nd. Um, Peter Adesi is going to find out the extent of his uh, stomach cancer this week. And Ron Bernhagen is giving thanks that he has been cleared on cancer, but he'll undergo chemo treatments to make sure uh, he can stay in remission. We want to remember those who have experienced loss as a result of these storms. Uh, that is going to be a long effort. Uh, and the Ancloat River down uh, around Highway 54 is still in major flood stage. And I don't know about the Withlacoochee. It was supposed to be, but I haven't really heard. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have one another. And Lord God, one of the deceitful ways that sin gets us is, is when we keep it in the dark, Lord God, and we don't bring it into the light of your forgiveness. That's why we have a word, confess your sin one to another, that you might receive forgiveness and healing, Lord God. And so we've come to this place of sanctuary, Lord. We've confessed, we've heard your word of forgiveness. We pray, Lord, that as your people, we would we would seek to consider how we might encourage one another, how we might stimulate one another to love and good works, all to the praise of your glorious grace. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we do pray for your correction, your discipline in our lives, but don't discipline us in your anger, in your, your righteous indignation, Lord God. Rather, discipline us according to your, the love of a heavenly Father who has compassion on dearly loved children, Lord God. But indeed, we, we dare to ask that you would indeed discipline us because you love us and you want us to con be conformed to the image of your Son, that we might be uh, more pliable and, uh, and eager to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, Lord God. Lord, in your mercy... Lord God, we pray for those who have been affected by the storms that have passed through these weeks here in Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, so many places, Lord God. The recovery will be long and arduous for some, and for some, maybe there won't be a recovery. It's just a new normal. There's, there may be no going back, Lord. It's figuring out a different way forward. We pray, Lord, that they would cry out to you, Jesus, in their time of need. That's what you want. We pray more and more people, Lord, uh, would, as the storms grow louder, that our prayers would grow even louder, Lord God, and that more people would turn to the Lord their God to cry out to their Savior, Jesus, that you would have mercy on them because your goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life. And surely, by your goodness and mercy, we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So we thank you for this place of sanctuary today. We thank you for your word of comfort and hope. We thank you, Lord God, for the body and blood of our Savior and Lord Jesus, bread from heaven that will certainly nourish us and give us strength for the journey. Lord, in your mercy. And we do uh, rejoice with those celebrating 
uh, birthdays this coming week, Lord God. We ask that you'd open the windows of heaven and pour out so much blessing on them that they can't contain it all, but find increasing joy in sharing it. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up, Lord, those who are seeking your healing. We thank you with Ron that he has experienced uh, that healing, that, that the cancer has been removed from his body. There are many others, Lord, on our cancer list that would pray the same. We know that one day that will be removed. If not today, then tomorrow. And if not tomorrow, then in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ when we see him face to face. So we do pray for this meantime, Lord God. We pray in this time of adversity, this time of difficulty, when the deceitfulness of sin might suggest that God doesn't really care. Maybe there's an easier way, a, a, a path that, that isn't in God's way, in His direction, Lord God. We pray that you would guard us against the deceitfulness of sin when adversity comes upon us, that we would cry out to you and turn to you, that we would indeed experience your healing to the praise of your glorious grace. We commend all for whom we pray into your care, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and, with you and the Holy Spirit are worshipped and glorified. And all God's people said, Amen. Just a couple of announcements. I wanted to thank Sarah and Johnny, uh, who did a lot to just get things straightened up and cleaned up. And Sarah has put in a call to Duke Energy. Hopefully they can get out here sooner rather than later. But as you know, they're way backed up on things as well. Um, but uh, Sarah put a lot of effort in, and I appreciate her doing that for us and uh, Johnny as well. Uh, and then uh, Mark has uh, an announcement, too, uh, that he would like to spend a moment with. Good morning. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> today is Pastor Appreciation Sunday. <clears throat> the electrical problem has also affected my throat. <clears> throat> we don't have any water, but I have a problem with speaking. In any event, on behalf of the Board of Elders, I would like to express our thanks and appreciation to Pastor for all that he, for all that he does, including his excellent preaching, um, messages that are well thought out, theologically sound, and oftentimes challenging, and for his uh, teaching and equipping, uh, including from the pulpit, in the classroom, in our Bible studies, and uh, in the midweek word. We're also thankful to Pastor for his leadership in an area that many of you may not be aware of, which is in community outreach. Um, I'm going to give you a few examples. Uh, the, we have uh, Youth Thrive Florida, which meets in our fellowship hall for senior activities and lunch on Thursdays and Fridays. Um, another example is the fact that uh, Holy Trinity is now uh, on the city of Brookville's uh, welcome website for uh, new residents. Uh, there's a link to our website. Um, a third example is our, a project that we're now working on, which is with St. Pauli Textile. There's an article in the current Trinity Trumpet. Uh, they have a shed installed on our property for uh, people to deposit unwanted clothing. It works well with the food pantry. The food pantry is going to have a key and can access that to take clothing for its food pantry uh, clothing efforts ministry. And it can also deposit clothing that it doesn't want. Um, what you're probably not aware of is that Pastor identified each of these, brought to the attention, brought them to our attention, not only took a leadership role, but a very hands-on role. In, in each of these cases, uh, we would not have them were it not for pastors' um, efforts. So we're blessed. Um, I have a gift card as a token of our appreciation for pastor. Uh, and I wish you would now join me in, in expressing that appreciation and thanking him. Usually, pastor says, keep this.
card until after the second service. Yeah. But I'm not going to be here after the second service. Yeah. I'm going to be here the second service. So, so you can keep it till then. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. You're going to have to carry it around. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we'll put it on the altar yeah. as an offering. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we will at the second <laughs> service. That's fine. Um, and thank you and God's peace. Um, certainly is a privilege to uh, share God's word with all of you. And uh, it's been a long time uh, here, uh, but we'll see what God has in store for us. We face a lot of challenges moving forward. The Lord is with us, and uh, God is good all the time. Peace and serve the Lord.